In this video, we'll be exploring the conversations that are happening on Twitter around Trump, Biden, and the U.S. presidential election. We'll be doing this to demonstrate how to actually use InfoNotice's new Twitter or X.com import functionality to gain insights around a particular subject matter or discourse. We'll be using several different uh, ways of importing to analyze this discourse, and we have a number of different graphs that we'll be going through, such as a graph of Joe Biden's tweets, like tweets from his account, versus a graph of tweets pertaining to Biden. We'll do the same for tweets about Trump, and we'll even explore how to compare graphs, in this case, comparing the tweets about Trump with the tweets about Biden. And we'll finally look at tweets about the election and the presidential election in general, all to demonstrate a variety of different analytical tools and workflows that you can use to really gain insights and extract information with this Twitter import workflow. And so we'll jump right in. Uh, we'll start with this first graph, which contains tweets from Joe Biden's account. Um, these are the top 200 most recent tweets, so you can see that they come from three hours ago all the way to 25 days ago. And so, for example, if you want to see um, tweets that were tweeted prior to the debate on the 27th of June, you can go to the, the adjust settings, no filters, and then you can uh, set the filter time range so that it is set to right before the debate. And you can see what the graph looks like. Um, perhaps you can even zoom in to only see the most important nodes. You can then maybe zoom in so that it is more uh, close to the debate and see the conversations that are happening there versus the conversations that are happening after the debate, so after the 27th, and compare this information um, and see how the tweets uh, were similar or different before and after the debate. Um, you can also, we're showing the whole graph. So right now, looking at Joe Biden's tweet graph, we see that he talks a lot about um, political defeat, but not about him, but I guess in, in pertaining to Trump, women's health, his presidency, uh, dreamer struggle, Trump's legacy, et cetera, et cetera. And so there's a, a variety of different information, but perhaps you really want to zoom in on, on one uh, cluster of information in particular. Uh, so one way that you can do that is you can press shift and then click on the actual bars within each of these clusters to select. And so we're going to select all of the clusters except for the one that we want to view. So if we want to understand how Biden himself is tweet tweeting in regards to his presidency to get a, an understanding of how he understands the successes or failures of his presidencies, we want to isolate this particular uh, cluster of information. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to select each other cluster while pressing so, uh, shift. We'll go through each of these and, and this is making sure to select all of the nodes in each of these clusters, and then we're going to hide them so that the graph only shows the one cluster that we want to see, and it breaks it down to see the information there. And so we can get a better understanding right here uh, of of how he's talking about uh, his presidency specifically. Um, so we have a bit of just self-reference of the administration, some things about accountability, uh, an obvious high regard for uh, making a difference with Roe v. Wade and how it pertains to uh, just the ongoing conversation around that. Uh, presidential restoration, so implying that there is work to do uh, to restore, uh, and then their their agenda their agenda in general. And so that's how maybe you can explore uh, somebody's particular tweets. You can also uh, bring them all back in, and if you wanted to have an understanding of how the uh, person is tweeting over time, you can use the dynamic graph settings. Uh, you can activate to highlight the graph, the statement that is uh, we're currently at, and we can play through. And this is going to play through the tweets over time. Alternatively, you don't need to automate the playing. You can Keep the highlight statements active, and you can scroll through the graph or through the statements to get an idea of uh, the proximal contextual um, relationship of each of the statements in the graph at, at whole. And so you can do a lot of the same kind of uh, research and analysis and reduction on, on, on this graph, which is the graph of tweets about Biden. And so this is tweets from other users who have uh, the word Biden in their tweet. And so like I said, you can go through the same type of analytical process to get an understanding um, about how people are tweeting. But one thing that I think is interesting is to understand the difference between what people are saying about Biden versus what Biden is saying uh, to get a better understanding and a picture of the gap between uh, the people and, and the person. And so the way that we can do that is we can, we can go to this compare graph uh, feature right here and we can select um, in this case, we'll go first, and we can we can change this later, but we'll, we'll see how the graphs intersect, so we're going to see where they have in common. And so we are currently in the uh, graph containing the top 200 most recent tweets about Biden, and we want to compare that to the graph with the top 200 most recent tweets from Biden, and now we will visualize this graph. And once it loads, uh, we'll see a graph, and we're going to see both of the, the graphs, and, and, and now we're seeing a lot of these diamond nodes with the at mentions. So this is because it's including the people that are actually tweeting it. We can remove that 
by going to this filter up here and showing concepts only. I also um, am going to go ahead and remove Trump and Biden for now to see kind of the just the underlying words. And I'm going to go to blind spots and here I have the ability to see how the graphs are similar and then how they're different. And so it's telling me that um, the following are in Joe Biden's most recent, but not in Biden's top. And so that's actually the reverse of what I want to see. And so I can go ahead and I can reverse the graph order. And so this is going to swap the comp comparison order um, because what I want to see is what is in the conversation that's happening amongst the people, but not in Joe Biden's tweets himself. Um, so when it reloaded, it brought back all the concepts. So we'll hide those once again, and then we'll go back here and we will select reveal missing nodes only so that we are going to see only the nodes or the words that are in uh, the, the, the tweets from people, but not in the tweets from Joe Biden. And when we, re we reveal those nodes, we can begin to understand a bit about what people are talking about, um, but, but Biden is not. We can zoom in to understand um, kind of the, the core topics. We can see some of the blind spots uh, that are in the conversation by highlighting them in the graph and rotating through them. And at any one of these points, we can go ahead and we can click on the, the, the link that's in the statement to view the actual conversation. So in this case, we have a tweet that's about Biden, and then we have a tweet from Biden. And so that's particularly interesting to see the comparison that's that's happening with this structural gap. And so that's a way that maybe you can combine two different styles of imports, um, importing from uh, tweets of a user and then importing tweets uh, containing a certain search query. And so we can do the same thing with with, uh, with uh, a graph containing the tweets about Trump. Uh, what I do think is interesting as uh, a part of this meta-analysis is I'm noticing that in all the, in the graphs, so in the graph about uh, Joe Biden, the tweets from Joe Biden, uh, it's interesting to see that Donald Trump, and you can see it right here, is the largest node. Where, And I think the same was the case even in the graph of tweets about Biden. I think Trump is also the largest node in that. We can see. Yes, it is. And furthermore, the, the graph of the tweets about Trump, Biden is the largest node. And so we see that not only are Joe Biden's tweets themselves, but also the tweets about, about, about Biden and also the tweets about Trump they, the largest concept in all of them is the other person, which is maybe indicative of our current election and, and uh, political climate, that it's more about uh, being against the other person than it is about being for the person. And so um, that's one benefit or maybe insight that you can gain from this type of meta-analysis of understanding the connections, uh, similarities and differences across graphs. So what if we want to understand um, how people are talking about the election in general? In this case, we are importing uh, tweets, the top 200 most recent tweets that contain the word election. Um, and there is a little bit of an assumption here that being that the U.S. election um, is largely in the, the Twitter conversation that it that, that tweets containing the election will mostly be about the U.S. election. But actually, I think also there's a lot going on with the French elections right now. So perhaps there's actually information in here that is about the French election that we want to remove. And so we can search for French and we can see um, that there are four tweets about the French election. So we can go ahead and we can remove these tweets by once we find them, we can select them, hit edit, and delete. French is in here. It doesn't look like it is, and so good. We don't want the French in tweets about the French election in there. So now we have tweets about this election. Um, if we want to understand what are the, like the, the biggest ideas, the core ideas, we can go to the node filters and we can increase this uh, uh, slightly, and we can see how the graph reduces. Um, down to its core ideas. And so we can see at this point, um, so the core is, you know, talking about voting, winning, election, Trump or Biden, which makes sense. Um, at this point, maybe we can go ahead and we can see, in this case, Trump um, in the relations uh, data. We can see that Trump and win. I want to find Trump and win. So right here, Trump and win. Um, 38.13. So it occurs three times as a weight of three and a between a score 0.13. And how does that compare to Biden and win? So this is maybe getting an understanding of how the connection between the two candidates and the word win is being used. So in this case, Biden and win is 623 and 0.08. So uh, much higher occurrence relatively in weight. And so maybe you can make uh, sense in at least this particular analysis of the most recent tweets um, that there's a leaning towards Biden winning. Um, that's one piece of data that you can have here, uh, or at least it's worthwhile to see that type of insight of selecting the word um, and understanding that its word pairing, in this case with win, um, is implicative of something. And so that would be a way of, in this case, comparing 
uh, the graphs, or I'm sorry, uh, looking at this graph that's talking about the election in general, um, you're seeing kind of more general conversation. By talking about the election, you're capturing uh, a, a lot of what's being talked about about Trump and Biden that you got in these earlier graphs. Um, but you're going to get m some information that is talking about the election, which implies Trump and Biden, but might not actually explicitly state them. And so you wouldn't capture them in the graphs that were importing tweets containing Trump or Biden. And in this last case, um, actually, before we go any further with that, um, one, one thing I want to show is this, is this process of revealing underlying ideas. And so what I like to do, and I've demonstrated in a number of other tutorials, is I like to use this, this tool right here, which is quite simple in, in its function, but I think is powerful in the, the, the process uh, of iterating it and sequ uh, sequentially like combining it over and over again. And so um, what I like to do is I like to reveal underlying ideas um, until I get to the bottom of the graph, and at each point, I like to understand the graph um, at, at different levels. And so right now, we're seeing that, obviously, election is taking up a lot of the the uh, informational space. Like, it's pulling in the, the... It has a lot of semantic gravity. Like, so many things are connected to it, so it, 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 it clouds what we can really understand about the conversation. And so when we reveal underlying ideas, and these big nodes that are connecting everything uh, are removed, it really disperses the clustering of the graph. And so we see that there's new information that is coming to the surface. And so um, I like to look at the graph at each of these points and, and see what I can learn as I peel back the layers. One thing that you can do is you can watch this topical diversity meter and you can understand how at each level um, the, the clustering is expanding or compressing and you'll see it go up and then down at certain points. You can also, at, at all these different points, you can download the data about the graph. So you can download the n-gram data, which is going to change at each stage as the graph restructures. Um, and you can understand some of the trends of the graph as you peel back to la layers. And so I'll go through this more quickly just so you can see it visually. And you can watch as I reveal the underlying ideas, how the topical diversity changes, how the graph structure changes, how the topical uh, clustering and naming changes, um, all because as you remove these influential concepts, uh, the the context and the structure of the graph changes changes, the clustering changes. And so I'll go through reveal underlying ideas, and you'll see all these things taking place in real time. And you can imagine how, uh, in, in this process of pulling back layers, you get a more comprehensive, um, robust understanding, because these ideas at the base, and you can see at this point, we're at this place where the top of the diversity is at a max, and we're revealing underlying ideas. And so this is kind of a min-max point, um, where the ideas are underlying, but they're um, they're separated, and so we have this like more expansive underlying view. But we can keep on going, and probably this topical diversity is going to drop at a certain point. Um, and we're going all and see it drop back down, and it probably won't make it back up to that point again. And so we can go all the way down to the bottom of this graph to really see the words that are at the base. Um, and, and and this is interesting because it's it's typically not words that you would expect, but they're, they they are are oftentimes very loaded words or surprising words that can help. Uh, flavor and contextualize and, and understand the nuance and nitty-gritty of the conversation. So you can see we can go pretty far down um, and all the way to this point, um, and we can see what the graph um, is, what's at the base of this graph, and, and perhaps there's some insights to be made at this point. And so I show you that because that's, that's where we're at here. Um, I did this process with a graph that looked very similar to what we started with here, um, except in this graph I was pulling in tweets that contained presidential election. And so what I did was I, I revealed the underlying ideas all the way to the base, and then I went back and I brought back just a couple of nodes by clicking on the nodes. And so that's what I did here. I revealed all the way to the bottom the underlying ideas, and then I brought back the nodes, which were removed early on, Biden, Trump, Donald Trump, Joe Biden. Um, I, I brought those back in so that I can have these big ideas that I know are connecting the dots um, bring some more cohesion to the underlying ideas. And, and I can also see more clearly which underlying ideas relate to who and where the underlying ideas overlap with one another. And so I can see this like clear line where um, there are some underlying ideas that connect the two, but also I can see some underlying ideas that are connected to Biden, um, but not Trump and, and vice versa. So in the same way that I had reduced this graph to the most underlying ideas and then brought back Trump and Biden, I can do that with other terms to explore how some of the uh, bigger terms that were present earlier in the graph are connected to the most underlying ideas and so I'll, I'll hide these nodes again, the one that I brought back, uh, and also Donald was one of them. And I can reload the graph. And now, for example, I can go in the nodes and I can find something that maybe I want to see how a bigger idea connects. So I can see how maybe, um, for example, America connects to the most underlying ideas. I can see how um, Democrat versus Republican connects. And so I can selectively bring back some of these bigger nodes into the graph, which was previously reduced, to see how the big ideas connect to the small ideas. Maybe I want to bring back one more word. I can bring back power. I can see where power connects, um, or vote. 
So that would be how to explore uh, the connection of big ideas with, with underlying ideas with a, a bit more clarity uh, and uh, less you know, density and noise um, in the graph. I think that gives you kind of a good starting point to understand uh, some of the potential with this. Like I said, if you are having trouble actually getting to the point of the graph, of importing the graph, you can check out the video where I explore that and explain that in depth, and we'll link that below. But feel free to add any insights, comments, questions, or concerns in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and share. Thanks.